In the next episode, Agent Cooper mentions the White Lodge to Hawk and Sheriff Truman, to which Hawk responds very forcefully, Cooper, you may be fearless in this world, but there are other worlds. My people believe that the White Lodge is a place where the spirits that rule man and nature here reside. There is also a legend of a place called the Black Lodge, the shadow self of the White Lodge. The legend says that every spirit must pass through there on the way to perfection. There you will meet your own shadow self. My people call it the dweller on the threshold. But it is said if you confront the Black Lodge with imperfect courage, it will utterly annihilate your soul. This is an important part of foreshadowing leading up to the finale of season two. However, just a little earlier in the same episode is where all the transcendent and all-encompassing message of deeper meaning of the Red Room is to be derived. Dale Cooper, when faced with a career-ending situation and possibly jail time for his conduct over the Canadian border, at One-Eyed Jacks, makes a a profound and heartfelt statement to his colleague, Agent Hardy, indicating that he has experienced an enlightenment moment of Krishna or Christ consciousness, not coming from a place of fear, but responding from a place of love. The lead investigator asks him, Agent Cooper, it's showtime. What is your defense? And Cooper responds with perfect courage, quote, I have no defense. I am completely confident in the rightfulness of my actions. Some of it occurred outside of Bureau guidelines, and I will pay the price for that. But I am innocent of any criminal wrongdoing. If they wish to charge me, I will defend myself in a court of law, end quote. To which Agent Hardy responds, Dale, there is a right way and a wrong way to do this. And the first thing we expect is a bureau man to stand up for himself. Now a man who can't, who doesn't even try, well, he may be packing feathers where his spine is supposed to be. And Cooper tells Hardy, Roger, I know the moves I'm supposed to make, and I know the board. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately, and I've started to focus out beyond the edge of the board at a bigger game. What we fear in the dark and what lies beyond the darkness, I'm talking about seeing beyond fear, Roger, about looking at the world with love. So in this transcendent moment for Dale Cooper, instead of fighting out of fear, merely to save his own skin, realizing what he did at One-Eyed Jacks was indeed done out of love and service to others, he is completely at peace with his decision, despite uh, facing some severe consequences, and he welcomes whatever consequences may arise out of his rightful actions, knowing full well in his heart that he did the right thing. This sort of courageous choice is presented to each of us in every moment. At any given second of the day, if we pay close enough attention, no matter how seemingly insignificant or monumentally important a choice may be, the entirety of our lives can be distilled down to making a choice between fear and love. Each conscious decision preparing us in our lifetime to enter either the White Lodge or the Black Lodge in a certain sense. Through Agent Hardy's eyes, Dale's response seems delusional or crazy. And it's only because he simply isn't at the same level of expanded conscious awareness that Dale Cooper currently resides at which is why he mentions a psychological evaluation to Agent Cooper in response. 
Of course, Agent Hardy wasn't there on that fateful night, but if he can't sense the truth, love, and courage in Agent Cooper's presence and in his response, which is right in front of him, well, like we in the audience can, then the message is clear. The reality we seemingly inhabit comes down to how open or closed we are in our awareness and what we can, um, you know, what what we can look into and what's right in front of us and how deeply we look into that. This scene is a prime example of the conventional thinking being re reinforced by fear. Whereas a transcendent and expanded level of conscious awareness can see beyond this limiting thought pattern. It's an incredibly important scene to me on many levels. So that's what I get out of the, uh, the final Red Room scene in association with um, Dale's uh, you know, conversation with Agent Hardy. And perhaps that sort of thing is easier said uh, in, in the waking world than perhaps done in the Red Room uh, of you know the Red Room being this ultimate, this place of ultimate and eternal judgment of the soul, right? So no pressure, Dale. Um, Agent Cooper, like all of us, must walk this razor's edge in life or fire walk with me, which can be interpreted, interpreted as the eternal choice between fear and love, the Black Lodge, or the White Lodge, light and dark. No matter what it is uh, that we want out of life, if we want things to always be a certain way, we can be assured that they most certainly will not be. Uh, however, we must always choose at every moment, and we can choose, um, and we can make things a certain way in that respect. And so this firewalk um, may burn us now in this life or burn us later, depending on the choices we make and if we reinforce fear or love through those choices. So the best we can hope for is the most critical moments of our lives, especially if uh, we find ourselves in the red room, that we choose love no matter how much fear tries to convince us otherwise. And of course, what makes Agent Cooper such a relatable character is that just like us, he doesn't always make the right choice. Cooper ultimately gives in to fear in the red room and attempts to escape his confrontation with the dweller on the threshold or his shadow. Um, and there's, you know, he, he's running this in this scene, he's running away from his uh, his doppelganger. And this is something that he isn't quite ready to face. And what I suspect that is, is it has something to do with Caroline, who uh, shows up in this scene. To which immediately after Dale's shadow catches up with him in a sort of high stakes game of tag, uh, Bob appears as, uh, you know, he's the poster boy of fear, uh, indicating that Agent Cooper has indeed met the dweller on the threshold with imperfect courage and has chosen fear. However, since Cooper still inhabits the mortal realm and is still very much alive, uh, instead of his soul being annihilated, it seems as if he's been possessed. Or maybe he's sort of... Uh, maybe something else has happened because he hasn't, you know, he didn't enter the Red Room through normal channels, let's say. So Dale Cooper never, uh, after, you know, the Red Room, he never appears quite the same in Twin Peaks, but instead in season three, we are shown several different iterations of this character. Hawk did try to warn Agent Cooper that this could happen. However, you don't know what you don't know. After all.